why it will be hard for 1,000 pound sisters Amy to juggle two children. Followers of 1,000 pound sisters are questioning whether or not Amy Slatten will be able to handle two babies under two and still be a good mom. Viewers of 1,000 pound sisters are fearful that Amy Slatten may not be able to handle having two young children. The reality TV star has had a hard few years as she tried to lose weight to start her family. Now that she is in a healthier place, fans are hoping she doesn't get too overwhelmed and fall off the wagon. Fans of 1,000 Pound Sisters will recall that Amy gave birth to her first son, Gage, in November 2020. Even though her doctors advised her to wait to conceive after having her gastroc bypass surgery, she and her husband, Michael Halterman, were thrilled with the news. As Amy Slatten put her health journey on pause to concentrate on being a mother, fans were cautiously optimistic about how she would handle her new role as a parent. After Gage's birth, the couple moved into a new home, and soon after, the they announced the news of a second child. With two babies under two, viewers are a little nervous for Amy. Even though she and Michael have always wanted to expand their family. Fans are not convinced that the Kentucky native is ready for the added stress. Having two little boys means double the diapers, double the food, and double the trouble. Gage, who is already on a decent schedule, will have to get used to a newborn in the household waking him up and taking up extra quality time with his mother. Amy will have to learn how to balance her two sons' needs quickly. Amy and Michael welcomed their second son, Glenn Allen Halterman, last week and couldn't have been happier. Baby Glenn arrived via C-section on July 5, weighing 5 pounds 11 ounces and measuring 17.5 inches. Amy gushed that her family was now complete. Gage also looked thrilled to be a big brother as he will soon have a playmate and a built-in best friend for life. 1,000 Pound Sisters fans are hoping that TLC cameras were there to catch the big day on film. TLC has yet to confirm a new season of 1,000 Pound Sisters, but Amy's sister, Tammy Sladen, revealed that cameras were rolling. Amy has had some reservations in the past about returning to the show after expressing that she felt bad spending time away from her son. Viewers are hoping she has signed on for another season so they can get a glimpse of the newborn baby. Until then, Amy will keep her fans updated on social media. 2. 90 Day Fiancé, Couples Who Divorced Quickly After Marriage Cast members who appear on 90 Day Fiancé aim to marry the love of their life. Unfortunately, not all relationships result in a happily ever after. Not all 90 Day Fiancé relationships have gone on to have a successful marriage, which has resulted in some couples divorcing quickly after marriage. After being on the air for almost a decade, viewers have watched over 50 couples struggle with their relationships as they transition into new cultures. Although the cast members have about a 75% success rate, there are a few couples who didn't make it past the honeymoon phase. Some co-stars are doing well and thriving. For instance, Lauren and Alexi Brovarnik might have had a rocky beginning between their communication issues and living at home with Lauren's parents. However, the couple is once again expanding their family and welcoming their third child. Russ and Paula Mayfield are another couple who faced several challenges upon Paula's arrival in America. Between Paula's love for a modest fashion, living at home with Russ' parents, and her distaste for the small-town life in Oklahoma, the odds appeared to be against the duo. In fact, even now they still face their troubles, 
but they're still working together and considering expanding their family. Unfortunately, not all couples were as lucky to find the love of their lives the first time around and ended up divorced in less than a year. Lisa Baby Girl Ham and Usman Sojibo Umar, 10 Months After only 10 months of marriage, 90 Day Fiancés Lisa Baby Girl Ham and Usman Sojibo Umar called it quits. The couple met online through a mutual friend and starred on 90 Day Fiancé Season 5. From the start, their relationship was tumultuous. Lisa is a strong-willed woman who's not afraid to speak up. Meanwhile, Soja Boy is more laid back. Although their cultures are extremely different and Lisa had no intentions of obeying her husband, the two married. Unfortunately, their marriage was equally filled with turmoil. The final straw came when Lisa accused him of scamming her and he filed for divorce. Natalie Mordovtseva and Mike Youngquist, 8 Months Natalie Mordovtseva and Mike Youngquist's relationship was also filled with drama. The couple appeared on 90 Day Fiancé Season 7. Throughout their time on the show, the two constantly argued and couldn't see eye to eye. 90 Day Fiancé's Natalie even accused Mike of cheating on her. However, their relationship's problems weren't the only concern as Natalie struggled to get along with her mother-in-law. Despite all the fighting, they got married, but their problems persisted in their marriage. Just eight months after getting hitched, Natalie left Mike on Christmas Eve. Jorge Nava and Anfisa Arkhipchenko, Eight Months Jorge Nava and Anfisa Arkhipchenko's marriage was also very brief. The two met on Facebook and starred on 90 Day Fiancé Season 4. Jorge was instantly attracted to the Russian beauty. However, their relationship was not without its problems. Jorge lied to Anfisa about how successful he was and she was also upset that he didn't have enough money to buy her expensive gifts. Despite 90 Day Fiancé's Jorge and Anfisa's problems, they married, but their relationship quickly unraveled. Six months after their marriage, Jorge was arrested for drug possession and Anfisa subsequently filed for divorce two months after his incarceration. Jonathan Rivera and Fernanda Flores, 7 months Jonathan Rivera and Fernanda Flores' marriage was also short-lived. The couple met on a night out in Mexico and appeared on 90 Day Fiancé Season 6. They had a very tumultuous relationship as Fernanda was often jealous of other women, and her strong-willed nature was revealed when she found women's underwear in his apartment. Additionally, Fernanda was not happy with Jonathan's lifestyle and claimed he lied about finances. Despite their problems, they married, but their relationship didn't survive much longer. About seven months after getting married, the couple split and Fernanda appeared on the spin-off 90 Day Fiancé, The Single Life. Molly Hopkins and Luis Mendez, Six Months The 90 Day Fiancé alums Molly Hopkins and Luis Mendez, had one of the shortest-lived marriages in 90 Day Fiancé history. The couple met while she was on vacation in the Dominican Republic and were engaged within two months. From the beginning, their relationship was rocky, as Luis has no interest in being a stepfather to Molly's two children. He also crossed the line by asking her daughter Olivia personal and awkward questions. Despite their differences, they got married in secret but their relationship crumbled within six months. Molly grew wise to his true intentions and kicked him out after another one of their riotous arguments. Colt Johnson and Larissa Lima, Six Months 
Colt Johnson and 90 Day Fiancé's Larissa Lima's relationship was also quite tumultuous. The couple met online and then starred on 90 Day Fiancé Season 6. From the very beginning, their relationship was filled with fighting. Colt and his mother have a close relationship, and Larissa was not happy about it. Plus, she wasn't a fan of his penny-pinching ways and was convinced he had cheated on her. Their relationship was also quite volatile, as they would often get into physical altercations. Just six months after getting married, Larissa was arrested for domestic violence and Colt subsequently filed for divorce. Danielle Mullins and Mohamed Jbali, two months Danielle Mullins and Mohamed Jbali's marriage was the shortest in 90 Day Fiancé history. 90 Day Fiancé's Danielle and Mohamed appeared on season 2 of the show and had a very turbulent relationship. Danielle wasn't truthful about her financial problems and Mohamed wasn't honest about his true intentions. The potential of their marriage was discussed at length, up until a few hours before the ceremony. Despite their chaotic relationship, the two tied the knot, but Mohammed wasn't keen on kissing his new bride at the altar. Alas, the couple separated within two months after she discovered he was allegedly intimate with other women. With the U.S. divorce rate average at 50% after about seven years together, it's clear that not all relationships last forever. For some couples on 90 Day Fiancé, their marriages didn't even last long enough to make it to the average. Some of these stars, like 90 Day Fiancé's Colt, Soja Boy, and Molly, have moved on with new love interests but not all of them have been as lucky. While there are many factors that can contribute to a divorce, it seems like for these couples, it just wasn't meant to be. In the end, 90 Day Fiancé viewers are hoping the best for these cast members on their search for undying love.